Man, Pastor, know he preached today, man. But what about them devil legs? You think it's some old devil legs left up there, man? Yeah, them devil legs was on point. Mm. Brother Jared, hold on. What happened, Brother Jared? Hey, Brother Bird. Man, I done lost it all, bro. The Maserati? The car, my wife, the suit I had. I took it to play those closets. They gave me $10. All God let me keep with the doggone shoes, man. I to play, those, play those closets. They gave me $10 for it. Man, I'm so sorry, brother. I took your advice. I went into the church, man, and God has blessed me, man. I'm reaping in my due season, man. I'm sure I'll hit that for you, brother. I'll sure hit that. Come to church sometime. Yes, Come sir. Come to church sometime. Do that, man. God bless you. God bless you, brother. Young blind brother. Hey, you remember, Jay? I knew that was a rental car, man, that Maserati. Yeah. Yeah. It's a rental. Welcome back, Kevin Hobbs, Pastor Button, our fellowship, uh, continuing in our 2020 Vision mini series. Uh, we talked to you about some exciting topics. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, this week, I'm going to be coming to you uh, talking about due season, okay? Uh, Galatians 6 and 9 says, And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Uh, oftentimes people view, talk about this due season as being a time in which God will bless you or grant you whatever your dreams and desires are. Uh, we talked about it uh, already about how the blessings of God are not natural but spiritual things. Uh, and so because people have a bad foundation in regards to God's blessings, they think that this due season has to do with their season to when they come into a new job, new more money, uh, a new house, new spouse, whatever the case may be, their due season is equated to things natural in the flesh. Uh, but understand that in Galatians 6 verse 9, the Ga Paul is talking to Galatians, a Galatian group, or, uh, all right, who believe that keeping the law all right, could give them eternal life in Christ. Uh, Paul calls these Galatians foolish, okay? Oh, foolish Galatians in Galatians 3, who have bewitched you. Having, be, having started in the, and begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? So people seem to think that if they do more work in the flesh, then their due season will be God blessing them with material things. This due season is the same for every believer, okay? And if you notice, Galatians 6 and 9 starts off with the word and. Uh, so Galatians 6 and 9 is in the context starting with verse 7. All right, and verse 7 says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Okay, whatsoever, <clears throat> whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. So we talk about this being weary and well-doing, okay? Don't be, don't. Be, don't be deceived now. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. So when it's talking about this, uh, uh, what, this good and, and, and let us not be weary in well doing, it's simply talking about things that we reap, things that we sow, whether it be sowing to the flesh or sowing to the spirit. Verse eight goes on to say, "For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting." Then verse 9 says, and, okay, let us not be weary in well-doing. The well-doing has to do with us ministering the truth of God's word, not doing uh, uh, things in the flesh. God is not in the business of blessing and giving us everything our sinful hands can touch. God is not a genie in a bottle, okay? He's not going to just give it to us because we did some work in the flesh and he owes it to us because it's our due season. Okay, that is not the context of this verse. All right, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. We're not sowing to the things according to the law, all right, which is flesh, but we're sowing according to things according to the spirit, all right, which are things uh, according to Paul's ministry. Okay, so when we talk about this issue all right, of due season, Paul even says in 1 Thessalonians that he has no need to even write to us about the times and the seasons because guess what? We're not living in the time of the signs, so we ought not to be looking for signs of the times. All right, so understand what this due season, all right, and what we shall be reaping if we faint not is simply life everlasting. Okay, that is what Paul is trying to get these uh, Galatians to understand is that this we ought not to be weary in well doing because God will give us life everlasting. All right, don't be deceived now. God is not a genie in a bottle and bless whatever you think you put your hands on. He's just going to bless it and give it to you because he owes you something. 
all right? God is in the business of giving us things that are eternal, all right? We ought not to reap, uh, to sow to this flesh, but we ought to be sowing to the spirit, so therefore, all right, we can reap life everlasting and the rewards thereof, okay? And so again, this is not talking about reaping, all right? Uh, if we faint not and receiving something in what people call a due season, which is when you come up, uh, so to speak, is the term that they use. All right, when I go from not having any money to having a lot of money, then it's my due season that God is blessing me in. And because I didn't faint not, I kept going to church, I kept paying money to the church, uh, with, which they call tithes, which we know tithes was never money. Because of this, God is now blessing me and it's my due season. All right, so don't, you wait for your due season, but again, God, in, in, in the scripture, in the context of the scripture, is talking about giving every believer something in due season, which is that life everlasting, which we shall not only reap, but the rewards thereof, if we've done things according to the right way of God. So we're to be uh, sowing to that of the spirit. To sow to the spirit is not to do anything in and of the flesh, but it's to study, to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly divided the word of truth. All right, get out of this thinking, this natural carnal thinking that God is, is in the business or he owes us or is going to give us something in the flesh, right? When we're too lazy to just work for it ourselves. Right? God is in the business of building us up and building up our faith, which faith does not come by your circumstance. Faith comes by studying his word, Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith is not increased by your circumstance of what you have and don't have. Faith does not say that everything is going to be okay. Faith just means that you'll be okay no matter how things turn out. So when it comes to this, we ought not to be weary in well-doing which dwell doing is preaching the gospel, the truth of the gospel, even in the midst of persecution. Let us not be weary of well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not, because there is a reward of the inheritance for those of us who live godly in Christ Jesus, according to the book of Colossians. All right, so there is work to be done, but it's not more work in the flesh, it's more knowledge in the word and building up in our inner man and that God will reward us for us in due time. If you've never had anybody love you enough to ask you if you were to die today, do you know where you would spend eternity? Well, I love you, but more importantly, God loves you. And if you believe that Jesus died on the cross, he shed his blood to pay for your sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day for your justification. If you believe that you're saved eternally and eternal means forever. Until next time, grace and peace.